All right, here we go with another weapons tier list. You may be wondering why I'm doing another one of these after the one I did 11 months ago. And the reason is that Battlestate, for better or for worse, has clicked the change button so many times between now and then that that list is entirely irrelevant. Weapons that two wipes ago would have defined the meta and were prevalent literally on every map have faded to the point of being as irrelevant as Battlefield 2042. That list is entirely outdated, and we are playing an entirely new game at this point. So, I figured that now, with especially with the recent 556 changes, now was as good a time as ever to completely re-rank all of them, and hopefully give you some idea of what you're working with in the new wipe. Now, much like how you use these weapons to protect yourself in Tarkov, you can protect yourself on the internet with Surfshark. Let's face it, the internet is a wasteland, with threats ranging all the way from that hacker in the corner of the cafe who's trying to steal your info, all the way up to companies that specialize in privacy invasion, there are threats literally everywhere. These rats would like nothing more than to come across someone like you who is as defenseless as a hatchling, and thus, easy prey. This is where Surfshark comes in. Through the power of military-grade encryption, Surfshark gives you a tanky meta build and sends you on your way with the comfort that comes with security. Even on public networks, Surfshark keeps the hackers at bay, allowing you to confidently access sensitive materials such as your bank account. My personal favorite feature, and the one I use most often since I don't leave my room, is the ability to virtually change my location. With a simple few mouse clicks, you are able to completely change your virtual location, enabling you to bypass geo restrictions and access entirely different catalogs on streaming services. Want to watch Avatar The Last Airbender but keep seeing this absolute dumpster fire show up? Simply with two clicks, change your virtual location, and go back to pretending that that film never exists. With over 3,200 servers in 95 countries, there is bound to be a server that fits your needs. You can access all this and so much more using my link in the description below, which will also net you 83% off and three months extra for free. If you are at all interested in this incredible deal, please be sure to check out the link below. And once again, thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. All right, and with that out of the way, we are going to start with the pistols. Um, first of all, I'm going to say that do not worry, the 1911 has not lost its rank in the S tier category. The uh, Matu World Wars, as well as just the style points you get for using this thing, make it S tier, and 45 ACP AP genuinely hits very, very, very hard. Uh, the M45 will remain in banishment or F tier because of the fact that it is trying to be the Zoomer 1911, and as a result, is just not as cool at all. So, yeah. The TT will remain in B tier as it is pretty stylish and basically just the Russian 1911, except it was used for um, more, we'll say spicy reasons. Um, and that is as far as we are going to go into that because I like being paid by YouTube. So yeah, that's gonna go into B tier. Um, with those three ranked, we are now going to rank most of the 9x19 pistols. That being E tier across the board. Seriously, 9x19 at this point is just, you use it for the first week of wipe, and by then, you're done with it. There's no reason to use it. I'm gonna reserve my long rant about it for the SMG category, but yeah, there's no reason really to use any of the 9x19 pistols, so all of them are gonna go into E tier, with the exception of the Beretta, which is gonna go into F tier, because I just do not like its iron sights. Um, the 9x19 revolver will be placed into D tier. Um, listen, I like revolvers as much as everyone else, but this thing is a snub-nosed 9x19 revolver. You can't call it the big iron. What is the point if you can't call it the big iron? So, yeah, it's gonna go into D for disappointment. The only 9x19 pistol that will be completely evading the trash levels is the Glock 18, so because even though 9x19 is absolute dog water, 
If you put 50 of them in a magazine and spurt them out at an ungodly rate, you're still gonna get stuff done. So it's gonna go into B tier because it still works and I will say that this is likely the way most people get stirrup done because that quest really, really sucks. So yeah, Glock 18 is gonna go into B tier. The Russian alternative to the Glock, the APS, I really just don't like this thing. You can't put a 50 round magazine into it. The recoil is a bit too much in my opinion. It's slightly worse than the Glock, but the Glock is saved solely by the fact that you have so much ammo to work with. I know there are some people that love this thing. I know there are some people that can get work done with it. I'm not one of those people, and for that reason, it's gonna go into F tier. Uh, the PM and the PB, unless you're slapping an 84 round drum mag into these things, why would you really try to be using them to kill other players? These are scab guns that you can only kill scabs with this thing unless you're some kind of Soviet John Wick. So yeah, those are gonna go into F tier because once again, they're just really hard to really get anything done with, even if you're just memeing. And finally, the 357 revolver. I mean, come on, that thing's going into S tier. You put a cowboy hat, you run around with that thing, you're having a damn good time. 357 uh, uh, FMJ is actually a pretty solid bullet. And it's, it's the big iron. What else do you need? So yeah, that thing's going into S tier. All right, back to my favorite category in the game, uh, shotguns. We're gonna get a few obvious things out of the way. The Sega 12 is still absolutely terrifying in the right hands and with the correct mods. It is still an absolute killing machine with 20 rounders. Unfortunately, Flechette is now locked behind Jaeger quests, which causes me pain and agony like genuine pain and agony. Loyalty level three was hard enough, but now it's actually locked behind a quest. It's probably for the better. Flechette is absolutely ridiculous, but it still sucks as someone who really uses these things a lot. That being said, the Sega 12 with 20 rounders is still terrifying with pretty much any shotgun shell you put into it. And for that reason, it is going to remain in S tier. Uh, two other shotguns that are gonna hold on to their rank, the, uh, the KS-23. It's more rare, it's harder to get, but it still hits like an absolute freight train and is really funny to kill people with. Um, that's gonna remain in A tier. Uh, the MP-153, you can shoot eight shells of absolute devastation at a ridiculous rate, and this thing is unlocked very early and is pretty cheap to mod and use. So yeah, that thing's gonna go into A tier because it is absolutely terrifying. The MP-155 is really just kind of a gimmicky, more expensive MP-153. I don't really see a reason to use it over an MP-153. The Ultima build, while it looks good, ultimately just I don't think is really worth the extra expense. The thermal camera is not great. So yeah, I really don't see much of a reason to use it, and as a result, it's gonna go into B tier. That being said, it is still incredibly effective. The newcomer of this category, the Benelli M3, is unfortunately going to go into B tier. I know that that is a surprise and probably a disappointment to someone, some of you, and I understand. This thing, first of all, looks absolutely incredible. It's semi-automatic, and you can load up to 13 shells of screw you into this thing. That being said, for whatever reason, I'm not sure if it's intended or if it's a bug, this thing shoots slower than the other semi-automatic shotguns. This doesn't make much sense because it's slower than the MP-153, which it is slated as having a higher firing rate, but it is noticeably slower at firing because it seems as though it has a semi-auto lock to prevent, I don't know, I guess macros or something, but it doesn't make much sense. If it did not shoot slower than the MP-153, this thing would be an A or S tier. But because of the fact that it does fire noticeably slower, I'm gonna be forced to put it into B tier. Still an extremely fun and attractive shotgun. The MP-133, I'm pretty sure they actually buffed the speed at which your PMC pumps the shotgun. Um, but, you know, it's still pump action. It's not very quick. It's not great against other players, but 
it can still be pretty devastating if you hit them in the face. That being said, most of the time people use this, they just are looking for a very cheap um, but powerful weapon to use against scabs, and it fulfills that role perfectly, which is why I think C tier is a fair place for it. That being said, the other pump actions, the Mossberg and the Remington, I'm gonna put into E tier, because while they fit that same role, they are more expensive, and I don't think they can justify being more expensive than the MP133. The Remington, though it can have 10, 10 is just unnecessary for a pump action shotgun. If you, by the time you go through that eighth shotgun shell, you're probably dead. You're probably dead. If you are actually still alive to fire the 10th shell, I will be impressed. But yeah, I don't see a reason to use these things that much because they just, I don't think the advantages they provide justify them being more expensive. And if you're using pump actions, you're already kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel anyways. You might as well just use an MP133 because you're trying to save every ruble. Another weapon that falls into this is the, um, the revolver shotgun. This thing is a LARPer's best friend. It looks absolutely incredible on cowboy loadouts. However, it is only 2k less than the MP133, uh, does not hold as many shells, is slower to reload, and is slower to fire. So there's not really a reason to use this thing unless you are just using it for the meme, which I very, very much respect. The Taz is absolutely terrible in the hands of a PMC. It is atrociously bad. But if you put these things in the hands of a scab, it turns into the most terrifying weapon of mass destruction available in the region. So I'm gonna put it in D tier because when you're a PMC, it's awful, but in the hands of an AI scav, you better watch out for this thing. The double barrel shotgun on single fire is a very cheap, but still somewhat effective weapon that can deliver buckshot into someone's face. So yeah, it's pretty decently good for being like, what, 8,000 rubles? But if you put this thing on double tap, it just turns into the gun of the gambling man. So because, yeah, you might land both shells center mass and kill him, or one of them's gonna hit him in the stomach, the other's gonna hit him in the chest, and while it's gonna hurt him really bad, odds are he still has a mag-fed weapon that is, able of dis that is capable of dispensing, I don't know, up to 30 rounds straight into your face while you're trying to reload this two-shot shotgun. So, yeah, it's decently effective, and it is just incredibly cheap. So I cannot put this thing any higher than B, but I also cannot put it any lower. Yeah, this thing's just gonna go into B tier. And finally, we have the rat cannon of class, and that is the MP18. First of all, don't ask me how the hell this thing is a shotgun. I'm not the one who put it there. These are all categorized based on the game itself, so take it up with Nikita. Second of all, this thing is just really, really fun to use. It's single shot, it hits like a freight train, and it's exceptionally risky. This makes it incredibly fun as you are taking your life into your hands every single time you pull the trigger. This also makes it exceptionally satisfying every time you get a kill. And as a person who really, really, really likes satisfying weapons in this game, I have to put it in S tier for that reason. And now we have arrived at what is going to likely be the most divisive part of this video. The submachine guns. I'm gonna start off with a few things I think that we can all agree on. Uh, first of all, the MP7. It's, it's just really, really good submachine gun. The ammo is inexpensive, the gun is inexpensive, the most expensive part is the suppressor, but that's not ex entirely necessary. And you unlock it and the ammo for it fairly early on if you really push quests. For that reason, it's just gonna go into S tier. Then we have the UMP. I called this thing the ump in my last video and somebody got really, really offended by that. So the uh, the Universal Maschinen Pistol is going to go into S tier. I apologize to all my German viewers because I absolutely botched that pronunciation. But I don't think I need to explain why this thing goes into S tier. It's super cheap, it's available immediately its ammo is also cheap and hits like a freight train. When everyone is using class two and three armor, this thing shreds absolutely everyone. It's, 
it's just scary. Then once people start to use class four armor, you run into problems until you unlock 45 ACP AP, where this thing once again becomes absolutely terrifying. It's an exceptionally good weapon and is going to go into S tier because of it. Um, now we are going to talk about every single 9x19 submachine gun. Yeah, they're not good. They're not good. I, I've had long discussions with people and yes, they can feel good to use, but AP 6.3 is not a good round. It is ludicrously overpriced for what it is at $8 a round. That's the same as 45 ACP AP, which is a direct upgrade to it in every way. I did the math. If you load 50 of these things into a vector and you start spraying with the vector, you are spending 13,000 or so rubles for every second that you fire. All of this money for a round that has 30 penetration and 50 damage. This thing is unable to penetrate any armor past week two of the wipe. You're not gonna unlock it until Peacekeeper 3, which takes a lot more than two weeks to get into the wipe for most of us. There's just not a reason to use 9x19 for serious play. Now, if you want to use an attractive gun like the MP5 or the MP5SD, that's totally cool. I completely respect that. So I'm going to put the MP5 into C tier because it looks good and feels good. The MPX will also go into C tier for the same reason. MP5K, it's just an MP5, going to go into C tier. And finally, the PP19, which is just a fun gun to use, really early wipe will also go into C tier. The Saiga 9 and the Vector and the MP9 will all go into D tier because why? Um, then we have the, uh, the PP91s, the Keter. Um, the only reason you're using this thing past week two of the wipe is, oh, leg meta. But personally, I find that there's a much better weapon for leg meta, so I don't like these things that much. I'm gonna put them into D tier. The better weapon for leg meta is the MP9N. This is the only 9x19 weapon that I believe can really be used seriously, and it's for the same reason as the Glock. If you load flesh ripping rounds into this thing, you're spewing them out at such a ridiculous rate that the time to kill on legs is practically non existent. These things are incredible at just absolutely shredding through people so long as you hit their unarmored feet. So for that reason, I'm going to put it into A tier solely because of leg meta. It still is incredibly terrifying with AP 6.3, but once again, AP 6.3 is far too expensive to use. In my last video, I completely forgot to rank the P90. I apologize for doing that. It's a very, very good weapon. Um, you unlock it at a decent time, the ammo is inexpensive, the gun itself isn't too expensive. It's just a good weapon. The only thing that is keeping it from going into S tier is the fact that you cannot repack magazines while you are in raids solely because it just takes eons. So once you've kind of shot through a magazine, it's going to be empty for the rest of the raid. Um, that's the only knock on it, otherwise it's just a phenomenal weapon and is going to go into A tier. The STM-9 is terrible. People will argue, oh, this thing is good. The only reason people really do that is because when this thing first was added to the game, Pestily made a video saying that it was a solid weapon. Now, admittedly, in Pestily's hands, this thing is perfectly capable of killing people. In Pestily's hands. I'm also certain that a Navy SEAL could kill me with a pair of nail clippers. That does not make it a good weapon for the average person. Um, it also suffers from what I like to call TX-15 syndrome, and that is it does offer some minor advantages, but it just costs so much more and there's cheaper weapons that can do the job just as well, if not better. So yeah, unless you're memeing, there's really no reason to use this thing. And finally, we have the PPSH. You can load 71 rounds into this thing and you can spray the legs and it's really effective at that. But I'm not putting it into S tier because of that. I'm putting it into S tier because of this. That poor, poor child. Yeah, this thing is really fun to use. That thing's going into S tier. 
I have no idea how I forgot to mention the 45 vector when I made an entire video on it, but yeah, that thing is going into A tier because it absolutely shreds people. It's not going to go into S tier because you just burn through ammo far too quickly, but yeah, that thing is scary. A tier. Getting into assault carbines, um, I'm just going to kind of rattle through this one. Uh, the RFB, it's good as a cheap budget DMR. However, it's not nearly as good as it was last wipe due to the fact that- why am I doing that with my hand? Is not nearly as good as it was last wipe. The move of M80 from Peacekeeper 2 to Peacekeeper 3 has pretty much killed how prevalent this weapon was. It's still solid, but until you get Peacekeeper 3, you're using BCP FMJ, which has 28 pen, I believe. Whereas 762 by 39 PS ammo actually has 35 pen. Why they buffed it, I don't know, but they did do that. Um, so yeah, while once you have got a reliable supply of M80, this thing is a very good budget blaster. But until then, it's just really not worth using. And once you do have M80, you also unlock the SR25. So. It's not as good as it used to be, but it's still a decent weapon, and for that reason, I'm going to put it into B tier. The ADAR is in a weird place right now. 5.56 is just... it's still kind of funky. That being said, I think this is one of the better 5.56 guns available, solely because the recoil is not outlandish, um, because it's semi-auto, and also it is an incredibly satisfying weapon to use. I've already made an entire video on why I love this thing. That being said, I don't think I can place it any higher than B tier, but I think that's a perfectly respectable position for it. The SKS is kind of the go-to budget weapon early wipe for a lot of people, and for good reason. The OPSKS and the SKS are very solid weapons. They have access to 762 by 39 PS, which once again got buffed, so yeah, it's even more terrifying now. And you can uh, buy 20 round magazines from Peacekeeper. Uh, loyalty level one. That being said, I only use these things until I get proper two or have access to 30 round AK mags. The reason is that the VPO 136 is just better, in my opinion. I rather use this thing. You can mod it more. It has less recoil. It has a higher mag capacity. It's just a better weapon. And for that reason, I am going to put the SKS into C tier and this thing into B tier. It's just an absolutely stellar weapon at the beginning of the wipe. In C tier is going to go its cousin, the VPO 209, I want to say. It's the 366 variant. I once again made a video on why I love this thing, but that's with AP ammo. So once you unlock AP ammo, you can have an absolute blast just bullying people with this thing. Until then, it's, you're, you're on the struggle bus if you try to use this thing. So, throughout the wipe, I don't think it's that worth it. Towards the end of wipe, or once you have Mechanic 3, you can have a damn good time. So, I'm gonna put it into C tier. In F tier, we have the Vepper Hunter, which is what a lot of people call the OG Rat Blaster. First of all, yeah, it was good. M80's been moved. It's not as good anymore. And while you can still kill things with BCP, I really don't see a reason to use it. That being said, M61 is still devastating and will load it into this thing is still an absolute chad killer, but there are so many other options that will do the exact same uh, exact same thing. For example, an SKS or a VPO 136 with BP ammo, which is cheaper and easier to obtain and more moddable. So I really don't see the draw of this thing. I don't like using it. It's going to go into F tier for me. Then we have the TX-15. The TX-15 once again struggles from TX-15 syndrome. It is technically better and it looks incredible, but its advantages do not at all justify its insane price over the ADAR or an M4. This thing is like 200,000 rubles. Why? Even one off the flea market is like 80,000? Why just use an ADAR that's modded, literally. You'll, you'll get the same results. For that reason, it will go into D tier because while it is not at all worth the price, 
is very, very, very attractive. So if you have some money to throw away, definitely pick one of these things up. The SAG545 once again struggles from TX15 syndrome. While it is an effective weapon, it's 70,000 rubles, and I don't think that its ergo and recoil justify its cost over your standard AK-74. I really don't think it's great, but it's also not bad, and it's fun, and it's satisfying, so C tier. On to the assault rifles. I'm going to open this by calling the mutant an absolute piece of trash and putting it into F tier. Is it still a decent weapon? Sure. Is it worth it over the new weapon that they have added that has completely taken its place? Absolutely not. That and because of the fact that it was literally everywhere the past two wipes, I hold a grudge against it and I'm going to place it into F tier out of spite. So yeah, the mutant is dead, hallelujah. The mutant's replacement is quite obviously the RD704. There is not a streamer who has not started using this thing religiously because it's just ridiculously good. It's better than the Mutant, it's cheaper, it's available earlier. What's not to love about it? So yeah, that thing is gonna go into S tier and it also looks much better than the Mutant, in my opinion. Um, the 762 MDR is going to remain in S tier. It's full auto 308 with somewhat reasonable uh, recoil and ergonomics. Yeah, that's that's very powerful and scary, and it's going to stay into S tier. Also in S tier is its um, harder hitting yet shorter range cousin, the Ash 12. Is it situational? Maybe. Is it absolutely incredible in those situations? Yes. Is it fun to hear that thunderous roar and watch just somebody crumple to the floor like a sack of hammers? Absolutely. That thing is going back into S tier. On to everything else, I guess. Um, the AK-74, it really feels like they've reduced the camera recoil on this thing. It just feels better to shoot nowadays. Um, I can't put it in S tier like I did before because it's I, just, I don't think it's quite as good as it was, but it still feels pretty solid, and I'm going to place it into A tier. Also in A tier is the AKM. It's not quite the RD-704, but the AKM has been reliable pretty much throughout all the changes that have occurred in Escape from Tarkov. It is the weapon that refuses to fade into irrelevance, and I respect the hell out of that. So that thing is going to remain in A tier. The AKS-74 I'm going to put in B tier solely because it's just a slightly inferior version of the AK-74. And the AKS-74U I'm going to put into C tier as it is a slightly inferior version of the AKS-74. So. I'm not going to mention all the variants that have like small advantages like the the AK-74N. They're, they're all kind of just lumped together. Um, the AKMS, not a fan of this thing. The only reason I ever use it is if I need a cheap weapon to finish uh, the Punisher Part 1 on Shoreline. So that thing is going to go into E tier. Uh, the AK-103. This thing is still pretty solid. It still hits really hard, but what really kills this thing is a lack of versatility. It has higher recoil than the AKM, and it also cannot fit a 308 muzzle adapter to get all the really, really good 308 uh, muzzle brakes. So for that reason, I'm going to put it into C tier. Is it good? Yes. Is there any reason to use it? Not if you have other options available. A few other things before we get to the fun stuff, that being the 556. Um, the AS Val. It got buffed. It now actually feels good to use again. While they may have nerfed SPP, SP6 is still a solid bullet, and I am just so happy that this thing is actually somewhat usable. So yeah, that thing is going to go back into A tier where it belongs, and it never should have left. The RPK, slightly better AK-74. I don't know what to say about it, just it goes into A tier. Uh, the SA-58, seeing this thing just kind of breaks my heart because I used to love using the Juice Cannon. Nowadays, it's not in a great spot. You cannot mod it to low er recoil like you used to be able to. And even getting it down to 78 recoil, which is far too much for its bullet and rate of fire, just absolutely murders your, your ergonomics and you're carrying around a 21 pound piece of crap all day. So yeah, SA-58, not in a good place and that breaks my heart. It's gonna go into E tier. 
The Scar H has largely replaced the SA58. While it still has a fair amount of recoil, it just feels better and it's not nearly as much to mod. So that is gonna go into B tier because it's still pretty solid. But ultimately, in my opinion, if you're gonna use 308, you should just use either the Black MDR or a Marksman Rifle because you are just gonna get better performance out of those. Moving on to 5.56, I hate to say it, it's still not fantastic. The recoil buffs were really, really good. However, I don't think they're enough to return these weapons to their former glory. The HK416, even when fully modded at 37 ergonomics, still bounces around more than I think it should. And that's after dumping 400,000 rubles into mods for this thing. So it's just really not worth the cost. The M4 at 55 recoil will still go space shuttle status on you with its in initial uh, recoil kick. Yeah, I just don't think that they're very worth using. So for that reason, the HK is going to go into D tier and the M4 is going to go into C tier. Is it usable? Sure. Is it worth the cost? Absolutely not, in my opinion. So yeah those things are still not doing too great that being said there are a few other 5.56s that are worth using first of all we have the tan mdr this thing has not changed much and the reason it's super good is solely because you can buy one off the fleet you put a muzzle brake and a foregrip on it and a sight and you're good to go you're done that's pretty nice especially if you want a nice little budget weapon that still is very 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 solid the scar l is going to go into b tier alongside the tan mdr i actually misspoke here they are both going to go into a tier because its recoil is very straight up and down making it incredibly easy to control it doesn't go side to side and its initial kick is not nearly as bad this is largely due to its slower rate of fire but i will take slower rate of fire that i'm able to consistently hit my shots over something that's gonna fly to the moon every time i pull the trigger uh, the AK-101 is an absolute laser right now. You can get it down to very low recoil and its slower rate of fire means that it does not fly out of your hands like a bunch of the other 5.56s. Uh, the G36 is in a weird place. Your ergo is terrible, but the recoil is not bad. And it's an incredibly attractive looking weapon in my opinion. So I think that that thing is going to rest in between A and B tier you can place it wherever you like, but I do quite like this thing. Um, I have not ranked the AK-104, the AK-102, and the AK-105, because in my opinion, they're just not at all worth using and are in banishment with the M45. So yeah, that's where those ones are gonna go. I don't like them. I also forgot to do the MCX. I really need to stop improvising these things because apparently I am dumber than a box of rocks. That thing is literally just a better 5.56 in my opinion and is extremely devastating at close range, so it will go into A tier. Before we begin, I'm gonna say that all the marksman rifles tend to be pretty effective because they all, you can get them all down to reasonable recoil, they all fire large rounds and they fire them pretty damn fast. So yeah, first of all, all these are pretty effective. That being said, the RSAS is gonna go into D tier. It's more expensive, it suffers a tiny bit from TX-15 syndrome, though not quite as much, but also you need to find it for a quest, and it can be an absolute pain to find one for Gunsmith, and as a result, I hold the grudge, and I'm gonna put it in D tier. Also, its advantages aren't huge over the SR-25 or M1A, in my opinion. Uh, speaking of which, the SR-25 is an incredibly solid and attractive weapon, you can't quite mod it to the same extent as the M1A, and it is a fairly expensive gun, but I do think it is quite worth it, and for that reason, I'm gonna put it into A tier. The M1A is gonna go into S tier. It's pretty similar to the SR25, but honestly, I just kind of find it funny that you're able to load 50 rounders into this thing and just keep on spraying at some dude with pretty hard-hitting ammo, and yeah. I like it a lot. Plus, it is the great grandchild of the M1 Garand, so you gotta show it at least a little bit of respect for the family name. It's gonna go into S tier. The VSS got a very similar buff to the AS Val, and it is very effective as an assault rifle. Not very many people use it as a DMR, unless you're me or a master of subsonic ammunition. 
but it is definitely still an effective weapon, and for that reason, it has once again been placed back in its rightful place of A tier. The SVD, I love this gun. I love the way it looks, I love the way it feels to shoot. That being said, it doesn't have the versatility of many of the 7.62x39 ammos, and it doesn't really have the ability to one-tap anymore, since I'm pretty sure they nerfed 7.62x54PS ammo. So for that reason, I cannot place it into A tier, but I'm going to put it into B tier because it's still really effective and still really, really fun. The G28 is the DMR that suffers the most from TX-15 syndrome. Is it good? Yes. Is it better than the SR-25 and M1A? Uh, not enough to justify its 300,000 ruble price tag. Seriously, this thing is ludicrously overpriced for what it is, and that is why it is going into C tier. Does it look good? Yes. Is it too expensive? Absolutely. And uh, rounding off the DMRs, we have the, uh, the Mjolnir. It fires a giant screw you bullet and it can fire 10 of them quickly. I don't think I need to elaborate on why this thing is gonna be an S tier. All right, another one of my favorite uh, categories because of how satisfying they are to use. We have the bolt actions. First, we have the Mosin. This is the perfect example of middle of the road. It's hard to hate the Mosin, but it's hard to praise the Mosin. So I'm just gonna put it into C tier. Is it fun to use if you have a firing squad of guys? Yes, but otherwise it's just not great. In B tier, we have the uh, M700. First of all, you need to put a suppressor on this thing because otherwise literally everyone is gonna hear you and start to move towards you. Also, it's just the worst bolt action. All the bolt actions are pretty similar because they're all bolt actions. So statistically, this one is the worst. And also I think it's the least aesthetically pleasing, but it does the job of a bolt action sniper rifle. So yeah, I'm gonna put it into B tier. In A tier, we have three pretty similar rifles. Uh, the DVL, you use it if you want a suppressed weapon that maintains a pretty good muzzle velocity. And also it just looks really good with that integral suppressor. Uh, the T5000, you use it over the DVL if you want a more straight pullback. That keeps the target in your scope while you're cocking the bolt. Otherwise, it and the DVL are pretty interchangeable. The SV98, they added some very new and nice furniture for this thing, and it just makes it look a thousand times better. And also, it fires pretty good ammo that is relatively cheap for how good it is. So for that reason, I think it belongs in A, uh, in A tier. Uh, S tier, we have, uh, is this the VPO215? There's too many VPOs in this game. Uh, yeah, it's still able to one tap to the chest at relatively close range if you have APM in it, and it's super inexpensive to buy. So yeah, this thing is gonna go into A, uh, this thing is gonna go into S tier because it's just a good gun. Then we have the AXMC. Once again, it fires a big screw you bullet, and now that you can suppress 338, this thing is even more terrifying. S tier. Finally, we have the special weapons. Um, the GL40. I still haven't seen these things that much, but now that there is a place to somewhat consistently get them, I am afraid that we are going to start seeing them again. Yeah, it's a grenade launcher. It fires a grenade. That's pretty scary. And then we have the M32, which is the GL40 times six. So pretty scary times six. God help us. All right, that is gonna round off this weapons tier list. I really hope you enjoyed. Um, I think this one's gonna be a little long because I'm looking at the recording timer right now and it says 51 minutes. Um, man, I am sweating in this getup. It is probably like 80 degrees in my room right now and I'm wearing this. I am in misery. Uh, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I really, really, really do appreciate it. Um, 
I don't have anything to say, so yeah, thank you so much again for watching all the way to the end, and I hope you have a good day.